Oh, okay, so it just continues like that. Welcome back, everyone. Oh, he's just shoving that thing down. Do any of you know of the extraordinary low wages that the Napoleon Imperial Army pays those it expects to keep our country safe? I understand that the temporary increase in taxation owing it to the recently ended conflicts remains in place, and I have heard it's hard for lower ranking soldiers to make a living, yes. All I want is to put a hot meal on the table for my son. That's why you were stealing things at the restaurant. The place is heavy with money. Every three days I'd go there and do... Recon... Recon... Uh, reconnaissance. For a target. And I'd enjoy chopping my way through a good steak at the same time. Sounds like he doesn't bother with a knife and fork even, which is worryingly behaving behavior, I guess. And your target that day was the old man in his cobine? Yes, sir. Uh, he was an easy mark. I slipped a coin in my pocket without any trouble at all. Hmm, a veritable, hmm, a veritable phantom thief you are. I was all set to leave the stake. I was halfway through devouring when it happened. Bang. Yes, when the professor was shot. I knew that if the police were conducted a search and found the coin in my pocket, I'd be finished. I do too. So I hid the incriminating evidence as fast as I could, on the double. I slipped it under the stake, hoping that I'd be able to rendezvous with it again at a later date. Perhaps you could carry on with this absurd prattling in your own time. Well, Miss Brett? Oh, of course, dear lady, of course. How rude of us. I'm quite sure there is no need to detain you any longer at all. May the esteemed gentlewoman please be executed, Your Excellency? Hmm, indeed. The theft of the caban was clearly perpetrated by this baby saddled ma uh, sergeant. It would certainly appear to be unrelated to Dr. Wilson's murder. Of course it is. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat. The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. N nonsense, is it? Uh, um, well, oof. And as for picking up your stick and biting into it without using a knife and fork, is beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. Very well. Now that all questions concerning this witness's testimony has been answered, I see no further justification for detaining her. Miss Brett, you are free to leave. Thank you, Your Excellency. Good luck, everyone. And good day. Ryunosuke, what's the matter with you? This is no time for daydreaming. Oh, no, it's just... Something about Miss Brett's parting words there got me thinking. I can't quite work out what exactly, but something she said jarred with me. I feel like there was a contradiction in there somewhere. Something didn't quite add up. If that's the case, why don't, don't just stand there thinking. Make your voice heard. Sorry? You can think later, but if you don't call out now, it'll be too late. The char will be over. Wait, Miss Brett. What is it now? I'm afraid, just one last time. There's something I'd like to ask you. I'd like to a you to explain the contradiction in your parting words from just a few moments ago. What are you talking about? What contradiction? Objection! What new not uh, what student uh, what new student nonsense is this? Well, what parting words are you talking about, Rinosuke? a coin under a lump of meat? The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. And as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork? It's beyond nonsense. Pure madness. Yes, I'm right. What she said there exposed an undeniable contradiction. 
I'm going to need to see evidence, Counsel. If Miss Brett's words truly are contradictory, where is the evidence to prove it? Take that! Boom. The photographic print of the scene taken immediately after the incident occurred. Because it's got a fork and a knife in there, right? What's interesting is the plate of steak that you can see at the victim's table. The steak that Miss Brett has been eating before the professor was killed. Yes, go on. More accurately, Your Excellency, the steak that was on the victim's table just before the professor was killed. Now you're just splitting hairs! Not true. Doesn't something about this steak strike you as very unnatural? Unnatural? What on earth do you mean? It's extremely obvious. I'm talking about the shape of the edge where it's been eating. I see you've noticed it too, Miss Brett. Noticed what exactly, Counsel? Just a few moments ago, Miss Brett claimed no Englishman could even contemplate picking up a steak and biting into it without using a knife and a fork. Of course she did. She's a refined English gentlewoman herself. Then take a good look at the steak in particular, the edge where it's been eaten. As you can see, there are clearly defined barbaric teeth marks there. Ah! Oh! Ah! It looks like Miss Brett has realized something. So, if the witness, as she claims, wouldn't contemplate eating anything without using a knife and fork, there shouldn't be teeth marks in the steak at all. But, what is your actual point? Perhaps the delightful Miss Brett was ravenously hungry. Oh, um, whatever you say, dear lady. As I said, I really must be leaving now. Afternoon tea with the Minister of Justice cannot possibly wait any longer. Of course, of course. This will all be over in the blink of an eye. Rest assured, I'm about to put this rookie in his place. Just leave everything to... I've heard enough. You irritating little spectacled... Samurai relic. Of of course. Dear lady What's the matter, Miss Brett? Have we ruffled your feathers? Clearly, the witness knows what this means. She's realized the cat catastrophic implications these teeth marks in the stake have for her. Ryunosuke, do you know where you're going with this? Yes. Now, at last, it's all come together. The mysterious teeth marks are in a, a steak that had allegedly been eaten with cutlery. The reason why the blood stain I know I saw somehow seems to have disappeared. And most importantly, the evidence that proves once and for all who shot Dr. Wilson that day. I accept that these teeth marks in the steak are a little unnatural as you put it, Counsel. But, what exactly are you suggesting that tells us? Everything, Your Excellency. Everything? Yes, I believe that these barbaric teeth marks in the steak here amount to conclusive evidence in this case. Evidence that will prove beyond any doubt who shot Dr. Wilson. Conclusive evidence? How many times have I heard that today? You wouldn't know the meaning of the phrase, typical Japanese empty threats. How can you be so sure? Oh, it's quite simple. If you really had such conclusive evidence, you would have presented it to the court long ago. Actually, the evidence I'm talking about hasn't been brought before the court yet. Hasn't been? What? But just because it hasn't been shown yet, doesn't mean that the evidence does not exist. Objection! This is absurd. The trial has run several hours already, and you say there's evidence beyond or yet to be brought forth? There can't be. I don't believe you have it. I don't, but there is someone who does have it. Someone in this very courtroom. And if that person is willing to submit the piece of evidence I'm referring to, it will solve every remaining mystery about this case. Very well. I have a feeling this will be my last request of the defense in this trial. Who possesses the conclusive evidence that will reveal the truth about this whole affair? Um, 
her? Take that. Possibly? Council, I'm disappointed, as this is likely your last chance. I would have expected you to be taking it more seriously. Uh, it seems you need some waking up. Perhaps a penalty will focus your mind. Uh, <laughs> now we've come this far, there's nothing more to say. There's one more person in particular who's provided us with various pieces of evidence already. Oh, okay. So the butler again. This is the last act in the trial. And then you have the cinder piece, Runosuke. Very well. Take that! Yeah, the answer is obvious. It's Inspector Hosonaga. What? I ha I have it. Yes. You you think I've been withholding conclusive evidence? That's ridiculous. Uh 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 um. I'm not saying that. Everyone's attention has been focused on the stake with the teeth marks. Yes. Now, earlier this afternoon, Sergeant Nosa told the court the following. I have enjoyed chomping my way through a good stake. And as well as admitting to stealing Korekuta-san's coin, he told us that he slipped it under the stake. You... you watch it, cadet. Oh. I'm a superior officer. Sergeant Nosa, could you please confirm something for me? Was the stake that you put the coin under... In fact, your own stake. Teen shot? Affirmative, of course. It might be a soldier in Imperial Nippon Army, but still. I'm not brave enough to ask a foreign gentle lady if she'd mind me manhandling her meal to hide something in it. In other words, the stake that the detectives submitted as evidence earlier was in fact Sergeant Nose's meal. But that makes no sense. That plate was taken from the victim's table! Objection. Yet, the gentlewoman doesn't take bites out of her stake, nor did she have any opportunity to steal this coin. Of course I didn't or of course I didn't steal it. To even suggest such a thing would be an affront to the entire British Empire. Well then, how do you explain this paradox? Exactly! Surely you're not going to suggest that the sergeant switched the two stakes over. You did switch the plates! Well, uh, after it happened, the, um... When I saw the civilian had been murdered right in front of my eyes like that, I panicked. And as I said, I immediately lifted my stick and hit the coin underneath it. But then when the waiter announced that he was undercover policeman, I thought I'd had it. If he'd decided to investigate my slab of meat, that'd be it. I'd be getting my marching orders. So when the cadet here was arrested and taken off to the kitchen, I seized my chance. With military precision and timing, I switched my steak with the one on the foreign lady's table. What? You can't have... I, I never saw you do such a thing. It was called Operation Lightning Bolt. There was no time for strategic planning. It was do or die, I tell you. So yes, I did what had to be done. And all right, so that solves that. We're getting closer to the end of this. However, fear not, prosecutor son. What now? I swear on the brass buttons in my uniform. That is all I did, sir. All you did? That's plenty, Sergeant. Yes. So, if Sergeant Nosa switched the plates over, it means he took Miss Brett's steak and the plate it was on back to his own table. Yes, that follows. Inspector Hosunaga. Yes. Earlier in this trial, you told the court this. You said that you had not only taken Miss Brett's stake after the incident, but also the sergeant's. That to preserve evidence, you had taken both. Ah. That's correct. Then, please present it to the court now. The plate that was actually on the victim's table at the precise moment he was shot. What can that possibly tell us now? I mean, a cold slab of tough meat, it can't have the slightest bearing on the case. No, you're not wriggling your way out of it this time, lady. I, I beg your pardon. 
Surely you're not that forgetful. Surely you remember the reason why the steak pan promises to prove such a problem for you, no? Hmm, you're the one who decided it was a problem, not me. The reason the defense asked to see what that plate was to confirm something the defendant remembers seeing. Thinks he remembers. I'm quite sure of what I saw, Miss Brett. On the side of the plate was, that was on the table directly behind Dr. Wilson, there was a clear splattering of blood from the gunshot wound to the victim's chest. I believe the defendant's memory serves him well. And now we have the evidence to prove it. The plate that were, you were eating from, Miss Brett. Let us not prolong this any further. Inspector, you will show us the evidence to this court. Present the beef steak and plate that was originally on the victim's plate at the time of the incident. Yes, sir. Sorry for keeping you. Here is the other steak in this plate. Please feel free to examine it. The blood stain. It's clearly visible. Look! Yes. Now this makes everything clear. The blood you can see on the side of the plate shows at the moment of the victim's shot. He was facing the table with his back to me. In other words, it's impossible for Naruhoto-san to have shot the victim. Ah, uh, it, it can't be. In fact, there's only one person who could possibly have shot Dr. Wilson from the front. I'm sure everyone knows by now who that person is. Uh, um. That's right. Miss Giselle Brett. It's you. Oh, she about to start tweaking. Oh, the swan became flaccid. Outdone by a Japanese. Me, a Japanese schoolboy. No, no, no. <laughs> Oh, they don't a fit. She going crazy. She losing her mind. Oh, dang. Oh, she died. Oh, farewell, girl. <laughs> There's just birds. What in the absurd? Please excuse my little outburst. I briefly lost my composure. Most unbecoming behavior for an English gentlewoman. Forgive me. Well, Miss Brett, I think it's time you told the court what actually happened that day. The truth this time. Gladly, Your Excellency. It was I who took the professor's life, using cure air. As you surmised, I chose that particular day for one very important reason. The professor had a dental appointment for the extraction of one of his teeth in the morning. So you planned to kill the professor, knowing that no trace of poison would be found in his water, because cure air is unheard of here in Japan. Yes, of course, I never intended to remain at the restaurant for as long as I did. I only needed to see the professor take one tiny sip of his water and it would all be over. I would place the steak I would ordered in front of him to make it appear as though he'd been dining alone and leave immediately, however... Before any of that happened, there was an unexpected visitor at the professor's table. That would be me, I suppose. Yes, you. Who else? Such a trifling matter, but the fact that you decided to come over and greet the professor meant that I had lost my chance to slip away unnoticed. In due course, the professor took a sip of his water and was paralyzed. I made sure he was sitting in his chair such that he wouldn't fall. 
There was no going back at that point, so I concocted a plan for the spur of the moment. A plan to pin Dr. Wilson's murder on this innocent man. I happen to know that the professor always carried a gun. I decided to use that fact to my advantage. I had the bottle of the career in my handbag and my own pistol concealed under my skirt. Uh, under your skirt? So I was right. There were two guns. Yes. And then I finished my coffee and got up to leave. That's when I noticed the professor's gun, which you had presumably placed on the floor. Placed where you were sure that I had noticed. Or I would notice it. And everything went according to plan. You noticed the gun as I intended. And then, just as you bent down to pick it up, That's when you shot the professor with your own gun, even though at that point he was already dead. Naturally, the gunshot caused the commotion, at which the point the waiter appeared. Obviously, I assumed Naruhado-san was the culprit and apprehended him. I took him to the pantry that adjoins the kitchen and locked him inside. That's when I took the opportunity to turn the professor in his chair around. Because, of course... You needed to make it look like the defendant had shot Dr. Wilson from where he picked up the gun. That's crazy. So, there you have it. That is the entirety of my misdemeanor. Your Excellency. Yes. I wonder. Might I speak with you in private later? I shall call on you. We're going to tear that thing up. Thank you. Good day then, everyone. I hope you can forgive me, Naruhodo-san. No, never. Oh, she just faded away. She said, I gotta go, and then just did, like, a meme. It would seem this trial has finally run its course. I presume the prosecution is in agreement. This, this can't be. Takeshuchi Aku, or Auchi, does not lose. Not to the likes of this, this rookie student. You'd better start getting used to tough opposition. Arr. Ryunosuke Naruhodo! What? Yes? This is an insult to the Oichi family name. Will never be forgotten. You become conceited with age, Council, but the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. It's the way of the world. May you never forget that. Ooh. Give him a fresh cut. A thousand millennia may pass, and still, the Aichi clan will never measure up to the Naruhodo clan. This trial in the Supreme Court of Japan will, I believe, go down in history as the start of a new chapter in our country's judicial system. Despite being summoned as the accused, you, Rinosuke Naruhodo, presented an excellent case. I thank you, Your Excellency. The use of evidence and deduction to unravel the truth is a modern methodology. After all, it has only been a few short decades since our country opened its door to the wider world. But the Western ideas of science are rapidly gaining acceptance here. I feel sure that science will soon bring new methods of investigation and new procedures of justice. A new future of law awaits. But what it will look like, I cannot begin to imagine. That is for the young to pursue. Kazuma Sobi. Yes. After this trial, you are set to embark on a journey of discovery to the illustrious British Empire. Learn all you can. Absorb everything of the wider world that you are able to. And do not forget to fulfill the mission imposed upon you. I understand, Your Excellency. What was that about? 
Why do you look so grave all of a sudden? Ah, never mind. As for you, Ryanosuke Naruhodo. Oh, yes? In you, I sense... How can I put it? Unusual potential. I very much look forward to seeing how you carry that onwards. Thank you, Your Excellency. It is time to deliver the final verdict. I hereby find the defendant Ryunosuke Naruhodo not guilty. <laughs> yeah, be shocked, old man. This court is now adjourned. Twenty second November, two forty six PM, Supreme Court, Defendants Antichamber five. I can't believe it. I can't believe what's happened. I made it. I defended myself and made it through that horrendous trial. Rinosuke, you finally pulled it off. Congratulations. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you, Kazuma. Ha 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 ha. No no, it was a pleasure to watch you at work. So, you owe me an extra large sukiyaki from the place on Yume University Street. Don't forget. Good afternoon. All your hard work has pay certainly paid off. Congratulations to both of you for proving Naruhodo-san's innocence. Ah, our trusty jur judicial assistants. You worked hard for that result too, you know. Oh no, I didn't do any- Thank you so much. If we hadn't had that research report in Miss Brett's, I don't know uh, what things could have turned out or how things could have turned out. Your kind words should really be for my father. I was simply doing as he asked. It was his idea for me to go to the university and investigate. Your father? Ah, yes, of course. Forgive me for introducing on court procedures to Excellency. Yes. Have you seen this? Speaking of Miko Toba. Ah, there you are. I believe congratulations are in order. Naruhodo, you did an excellent job. But thank you, Professor. Oh no, it is I who should be thanking you. After all, your efforts exposed the true criminal that took the life of my good friend. Good friend? Oh, yes, you mentioned that before. It was you who actually invited Dr. Wilson to Yume University, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Professor Miko Toba studied overseas himself. He went to study forensic medicine of, in Great Britain. Presumably, that's when you met Dr. Wilson? Exactly. In those days, we worked together in the same hospital. Oh, you worked together? I've never heard you mention that before. Well, it was a long time ago now. Besides, it's your turn, Asogi. Great Britain is a magnificent country. It leads the world in science, medicine, engineering, culture, and of course, in law. Watch and learn, my boy. See what happens, or see what's happening in the world's largest melting pot. I will. I'll learn all that I can. I swear on this, the spirit of the Sogi clan. You're not taking that sword to Great Britain, are you? Of course I am. A Japanese man's katana is his soul. This blade shows me where I need to go and cuts down anything that's in my way. Yes, I've definitely seen how sharp it is already with my own eyes. That reminds me, what's happened to the woman? To Giselle Brett, I mean. After all, she's guilty of murder. Ah, yes, her. It's not easy to tell you this, but... What do you mean? Surely she's going to face trial herself now. She's a true culprit, after all. She will be leaving Japan in the very near future. For Shanghai. What? Shanghai? Giselle Brett will not appear in court again in this country. I'm certain of that. What? But why not? It's a matter of consular jurisdiction. Inspector Hosunaka. It was a hard-fought battle in the courtroom today. Very impressive to watch. I must congratulate. But what? what's all this about consular just jurisdiction? We cannot try this particular foreigner for her crimes here in Japan. What? We can't try her? 
But then who? Who's going to bring her to justice? A British consular court will hear her case somewhere far away where our voices can't be heard. But why a consular case? Professor, I simply don't understand. I thought consular courts were a thing of the past now that we've signed the friendship treaty. Yes, in normal circumstances, you're right. Then, so long as this is not a serious incident of a highly political nature of our respective governments, they can't invoke a consular court just like that. Oh, can't they? Yes, she's a student, but it doesn't justify our government's making secret agreements about her fate, does it? Something strange is going on. So Miss Brett can't be held accountable for her actions here in Japan. I'm afraid for the young student. Today's trial was nothing more than a game all along. There was never any danger of comeuppance, comeuppance for her. I don't believe it. The British government's foreign affairs ministry has demanded that we hand over custody of Miss Brett. They're obviously taking this case of a foreign student committing murder very seriously. But it's all going to change from now on. We can make it change. This is a time of great turmoil, this new era hand heralded by the start of a, the 20th century. One day, I have no doubt, that woman will receive the judgment she deserves. Yes, change is coming, and we're the ones driving it. Well, I think this is enough seriousness for now. This evening calls for a celebratory drink. But Professor... You're right. This is no time for gloomy faces. We should be celebrating Ryunose's not guilty verdict. Let's start having some fun. In that case, might I suggest La Carnaval? As the head waiter, I should be delighted to provide you with the ample food and drink. Um, you're a detective, Hoso Nagasan, aren't you? Um, um. Let's not worry about details for now. To La Carnaval, will you accompany us, Professor? Of course, La Carnaval's food is second to none. I shall go and attend the paperwork for Naruhara-san's release. Oh yes, thank you. So, Giselle Brett won't be tried here. I, I suppose that means I'll never know. I'll never find out why she killed Dr. Wilson. Kazuma. Yes, Rogunosuke? I just want to say thanks again. That's all. You really saved my skin. Haha, -ha, I didn't do a thing. You were the lawyer in there, weren't you? That defense was all your own work. Your skills made the difference, though. One day, I bet you'll be the best lawyer in the world. Hmm? I'm not so sure about that. To be honest, something kept occurring to me over and over again during the trial. I couldn't help thinking that maybe you're the one destined to become the great lawyer, not me. What? Well, come on, be serious. If I helped you today, it was only right at the very start of the trial. But you have a natural talent for it, for being a defense lawyer, I mean. Oh no, not me. All that tense verbal combat? I never want to go through that ever again. I just, I did what you told me to do, that's all. Because I knew I could trust you. That's the point. Sorry? What do you mean, that's the point? Listen, Ryunosuke. Do you know what the most crucial weapon is that any lawyer needs in order to win? Um, knowledge of the law? No, the ability to believe. To believe? To believe what? A defense lawyer has to fight for his clients. He has to believe in them at all costs. Like you believed in me when I said I didn't do it. I'm human, just like you. I don't have some superhuman ability to know the truth. But you have to make a choice about what you believe in and stick to it when you're defending someone. Sometimes in the courtroom, you can really be backed to a corner, but being able to remain faithful to what you choose to believe in, even then? Well, that's not something that anyone can do. It takes a special kind of person. Hmm, believing in your client. Just look at today's trial. I'm a student lawyer with precious little real experience, but you never stop believing in me. Well, I... You face seemingly hopeless situations time and again, and you never stop looking for the truth. And in the end, you found it. 
through your own efforts and because you never stopped believing in me. Thanks, Kazuma. There's something I want to ask you, actually, Ryunosuke. Well, it's a favor, really. Something very important to me. Sounds serious, what is? Ah, you're still here, aren't you? Oh, Inspector Hosunaga. I've arranged some rook shawls for us, let's go. Thank you. We'll be right there. Oh, he's about to tell us something. Let's pick up this conversation again later. We should be celebrating right now. Your first court victory and your study tour to Great Britain, don't forget. Ah, yes, that too. So my very first trial came to an end. Soma. Professor Mikotoba. Sotsuto-san, who acted as my assistant. Inspector Hosonaga, who didn't really play much of a part, but still. <laughs> It was because of the help and support of all these people that man I managed to get through that trial. But no, or but more importantly, Kazuma hadn't yet managed to ask his favor of me. Little did I realize just how much it would change my life. And ooh, what does he mean by that? I know because I played that second chapter at least, but y'all don't. We'll find out. Out. Next time, yes, we'll save. Um, if you watched, thanks for watching. How did y'all feel about the first little trial? Was it was a little bit long? Was it a little bit lengthy? Let me know. Um, how do you feel about the outcome of everything? Was it satisfying enough? Next, we have the adventure of the unbreakable speckled band with the introductions of new characters and new gameplay. So. Until then, thanks.